Hey guys, welcome to your 14th tip of the week with Helping Hands. This week we're going to be talking about cover and ranges. So let's get down to the basics to start things off. What, what cover is there in Company Heroes? So there's four types of cover. Green cover, which is heavy cover. Uh, yellow cover, which is medium cover to light cover. Uh, then you have no cover. And then you have red cover. Okay, so what is heavy cover? So heavy cover is where, where these uh, rare echelon troops are now. So like hay barrels, stone walls, and like for instance this tractor. Light cover is indicated by... Um, this ye these yellow dots as well and also by the shield so here we had the yellow shield we jump over here and Our shield to change to green so you go that means heavy cover so like crates as well are, are light cover trees Generally fences like these things over here are light cover No cover is indicated by white dots as you can see where we're going to position our troops You have some white dots, so this is no cover then red cover is indicated by red dots Which is the worst type of cover you could ever be in which is nor is normally in water or roads. So here we have on um, an RE squad on the road, and if you get uh, shot at by an MG or whatever on this road, you'll be immediately pinned and su uh, suppressed and pinned, and you'll take an increased amount of damage um, on this uh, on this road or any cover that gives you a, a shield like this, a red shield. So now let's move on to um, building cover or what units can build cover. So over here we have some, uh, some more rear echelon troops. So with rear echelon troops, I advise to build um, tank traps for cover. So you go A, W on the hotkeys. Build cover there. So there we go. I've just sped everything up because we're using a cheat mode here. So we can quickly demonstrate. Uh, and then you'd want to deny cover to your opponent. So there, by this means, I would um, you'd put some... Uh, wire down like this for instance. So now as you can see I can benefit cover from this direction because my enemy's base is over here And they'll be coming from this direction towards me So if they tried to if, if I was pushed off this cover They wouldn't be able to benefit from it as the wire is there as you can see Okay, because I can't benefit from the green cover here and cover is also directional which we'll get into that in, in, a, uh, in a little while So there we go. We, we've uh, built the cover there and that's a really strong a good strong point for us to hold the point now, come over here to the other factions. So we have OKW here. OKW Volks Grenadiers can build sandbags. You can wire them off uh, on the opposite side with um, the Stern Pioneer Reinforced Steel Barricade. Um, austere Pioneers can build sandbags as well as uh, uh, barbed wire. So they can you know do the same thing there. Then we have Tommy Sections. Now, Tommy Sections can also can build sandbags. But, but I would also recommend ghosting with the, uh, with the sandbag here because... You, you need to deny cover crucially in the early stages as you do not have sappers that can wire it off immediately, right? You have to tech up to get sappers, which you know, ideally you'd want to wire this off with, with, with a wire like that, right? But you can't always do that because you don't have sappers that early on in the game. So what you would do is you would say if you want to deny cover from your opponent, you would say, for instance, we want to deny this these uh, yellow dots here. You just put that sandbag there, unfinished obviously. And then it wouldn't. The opponent couldn't benefit from that cover. Um, this is the only way you can deny cover from Brits in the early game. So you might as well do it. And you need to. Well, and I recommend you should do it as well because you know cover uh, dictates who wins engagements. Um, so then we're on to conscripts now. Conscripts and engineers. So here you can build these big long lines of uh, the sandbags. Probably the best type of cover in the game because um, it's nice and long. The entire conscript squad can sit behind it and benefit from the cover. And then you can wire it off uh, like so here. Okay, now I want to talk about how um, cover is directional and that it, you might you might trick you. For instance, here we have um, a rifleman squad, right? And we want to use this uh, this well against this MG to gain cover. So it looks like we put the five men squad here, right? And they're all going to benefit from cover. Okay. However, re re you know this one guy on the on the right hand side isn't really in cover because he's sticking out from the well. And even though it does say that you know with the green shield that all men look like they're in cover. Um, uh, so for, as for the shield, right, the shield will pop on any squad if the majority of the squad is in cover, okay? So if you have two men out of four men in cover, the shield will, will appear. If you do not um, have, so if you have one guy in cover and three are not in cover, then the shield will not appear. But but still, one or, one guy might not be in cover, or two guys in your squad might not be in cover as indicated here, right? So all right, we're now going to change this MG now over to an enemy MG and it's now going to shoot at this uh, rifleman squad. Now it'll take a while to suppress this squad but it will suppress it because one of these guys is out of cover as we will now see. And there we go so three bursts and the and you think like that you're in green cover you shouldn't be suppressed right but you have been because your squad is not fully in cover. Now I will show you um, 
d uh, doing it correctly with the conscript squad. So, for instance, here we have the conscript squad behind uh, the sandbag. All the, the entire squad is in green cover. We're now going to make this MG an enemy MG, and we can see here that because the entire squad is in cover, they will not be suppressed by this MG42. Now, we'll leave it running for a couple more seconds here, just to, uh, you know, to prove the point that if all squads are in cover, they will not be suppressed by this MG. Now, if this MG didn't have invulnerability on it, it would have been almost probably dead by now because this conscript squad um, would be taking off models. And, and there you go. It's like it's on its fourth burst now, and it hasn't suppressed the enemy squad. Okay, now I'll prove that cover is directional. It looks like this squad is fully in cover because they are behind the sandbag, but because this MG has flanked them, we are now going to turn the MG an enemy, into an enemy MG, and this squad will be suppressed fairly quickly. See, one burst, the entire squad has been suppressed, okay? And this proves that cover is directional. So guys, in Company Heroes 2, you've probably learned by now that some units do better at range than others. So for instance, in an engagement where two Golden Strip squads versus two Grenadiers, the Grenadiers... Uh, most times should win this engagement. However, if you had conscripts that were on top of the Grenadiers, the conscripts would beat um, the, gre uh, the Grenadiers because their rifles do a lot better damage up close. The same thing with riflemen. Um, infantry sections are more likely to act more like Grens because they do better from range as well. Um, so you've got to bear this in mind whenever you're having an engagement. As you can see here, for instance, if I just quickly toggle these guys over to the other, the other side here, you can see that... The conscripts will absolutely decimate these grenadiers as they are up close and personal. We have six men versus the four men, you know, up close, more more rifles, and there goes the grenadiers, absolutely demolished. So that will happen the same thing if you had rifles, um, and so on. And stern pioneers, so like, for instance, the units that both have like um, machine guns. Like commandos, like rangers, uh, PPSH upgraded conscripts, uh, stern pioneers, uh, panzer grenadiers, all of those units would do better up close, right? So you want to make sure that whenever you have an engagement, you, you, you're um, as far away as you need to be to, to have the best type of engagement. Now I'll also show you how to, so if, you, if you've got that within in mind, we'll now move on to a map called Samoski, where I'd like to show you how you would probably um, get the best out of an engagement. Okay, now I'll show you how to engage in an engagement correctly. So here we have a rifle versus a grenadier. Now if we had this engagement from from afar, probably, most likely, the grenadier would win because he does better at range. Now look what happens when I try and I will try and close the distance on this squad. Now I've, I've got a couple of options open to me here. I could try and work my way through the cover over here to attack this grenadier. And I'll show you how this works now. Uh, but I could also go around the side and keep the cover facing my opponent, so therefore that that way I keep benefit from cover while continuously getting closer and closer to my opponent. So let's just see how this goes, right? So we're now going to swap this over to an enemy unit. Bear with me one second. So this is now an enemy grenadier. We're going to have the so I come into the engagement and now I want to get up closer to him. So we're going to try and come towards him, try and hop to cover to cover. And as you can see here, I've already lost a model. Trying to get closer to close, to close the distance. And now by the time I'm on top of him, I've already lost two, uh, three models, right? And I'm not going to win that engagement now, okay? So here we go again. We're going to do the, exactly the same engage, engagement, but this time we're going to take it um, a little bit differently. So here we go, the Grenadier versus the Rifleman. But this time I'm going to hog this wall around the side here. Making sure that this cover is always between him. So I'm going to let him fire a volley off. And then quickly move over to the gap once he's reloading. And now look, I've hardly taken any losses. And now I'm in a mu I'm a much better position to to, to, uh, to to take out my opponent. Now I'm directly on top of him. And now I should definitely win this engagement because right from beat up, win up close. And there you go. I took one casualty and well now two, but I managed to take down a grenadier squad. All because I managed, I, I kept on. Keeping the cover between me and my opponent. When I moved across here, I, I was out of cover, right? I was dodgy. I was uh, coming out of green cover, then onto the wall, uh, onto the gravestone, then another gravestone. And each time I'm jumping from cover to cover, I'm out in the open where the Grenadiers can easily take a shot at me, right? So always try and keep cover between you and your opponent. This was the risky bit, jumping from, the neg from no cover to into cover here. But... Try and always make sure that you're using the best available cover whenever you're taking the engagement. 
Okay, now I'll show you how, um, how not to take an engagement. So we have conscripts here, and we're going to charge against these grenadiers. Now we don't know. Normally, this would be a really bad idea. When you're attacking a defensive position, first of all, you want to, uh, if they're in green cover, and you have to. For instance, let's say that these guys are on your cutoff; they're in green cover, but you need to get them off here. So you're going to have to attack that position. So the best thing to do against like someone who's in a defensive position like this and in cover first would probably be to smoke forward so they can't see you coming. And then possibly push up with like some flamethrowers as well. But I'll just give you an example right now of how not to take this engagement with against these um, these Vet Three Grenadiers with LMGs. So we come in now, and we're going to try and push forward here. I'm going to put these guys in cover. And as you can see, we've already dropped uh, two models, and because we're on the move, uh, we're not going to be accurate at all. We're going to be um, easy targets as well because these grenadiers are in stationary, so they're going to be better. They're going to have better accuracy. And as you can see, these grenadiers are absolutely melt now. You know the engagement is happening up close. The, the grenadiers have already killed quite a few of those conscripts, and so therefore the engagement will swing into the favour of the grenadiers, as you can see. So there you go. What, what, what happened there? We there was twelve conscripts died, and only three grenadiers died. Now we're going to repeat the engagement, right? But we're going to take it a lot better. Okay. Now we have a mortar. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop a mortar barrage in front of that that those grens, so they can't see me coming. So there we go. This is this works well for against MGs. So now he started a fire. We can probably push in. So by the time that shell lands, the smoke will be there. We'll quickly change these guys over to bad guys. There we go. And now we've not. To, he, he can't see us, and we're getting up really nice and close and personal now. Might even want to urar in as well. So to save the time that we might be, be on an engagement, we would also want to focus down one squad at a time as well. So we, we want to focus manually, focus one, and then switch over to the other. As we can see, taking out this Gren. Focus that one. Uh, should win this engagement here because whole scripts do better against Grenadiers close range. And I don't even have any up upgraded weapons. You know, I haven't got any PPSHs and he's got um, LMG Grens. And there we go. And then even the Mortar coming in to, to help out as well. So there you go. Oh, we managed to, you know, totally swing that engagement. All because I just used smoke, right? Now, imagine I could, you know, I could use Molotovs as well. I could have both, you know, Urad the squads in to get up, uh, up close to the a lot quicker. Um, you know, Molotovs deny enemy cover and they force him to move. And if he's moving, that means he's not going to be fire firing. Especially the, um, you know the LMG because the LMG can only fire when stationary with Grenadiers not like it's not like an Obersund Dart and uh, MG because um, those guys are you know tougher as they can you know, they can fire it on the move so there you go that, you know that's a, a better engagement taken and that and we can also now steal a possible MG MG 34 or 42 rather sorry okay next I'd like to talk about buildings and company heroes too now buildings whether it be a wooden building or a, a stone building they all give green cover now the difference between wooden buildings and stone buildings is that wood buildings will collapse very quickly. Um, a couple of bundle grenades in a building, for, for instance, or an, uh, infiltration grenades from Volks Grenadiers will collapse a wooden building pretty much immediately. So you need to be very careful, especially smaller buildings like this one, this one, even even like a medium-sized building like this. Technically shouldn't be able to demolish a church straight away because it's got a bit more health, right? Uh, however, stone buildings, like you might find on French maps, um, they will not collapse so quickly, so they've got a little bit more health in them. Now, buildings can be um, very good to garrison, but they can, but they not might not be the best situation. You know, you don't always want to get into a, a house if the situation uh, doesn't demand it. Okay, for instance, here we have the church. Now, the church is a very dominating building on uh, Samoski, right? However, it has a, a couple of weak uh, weak points. On this side of the building, it only has one window, and also on this side of the building, it only has one window as well. So if you engage this house from either this side or this side, you can easily clear whatever's in the building, right? And as we as we all now watch, so if we move up with this rifleman squad, and we'll engage um, this, this grenadier from, you know, from the side that it would have most windows from, um, you will find that the grenadiers should pretty much clean up these... Um, these rifles fairly quickly. As we have three windows, again, you know, green cover against light cover, and the grenadiers are mopping them up fairly quickly. Okay, here we'll just have the engagement again. And as you can see, this rifleman squad will now engage this grenadier squad. Only one grenadier from this window will be shooting against this rifleman squad, and therefore, this rifleman squad should 
and probably will beat win this engagement as you've got five rifles in green cover even though the grenadiers are superior at range you've only got one grenadier versus five rifles it ain't gonna work out now if four uh, grenadiers were shooting at this rifleman squad at, at the same time then probably the grenadier squad might win but because we you know we looked at the map and saw um, the layout of it we used the terrain to our advantage and now the rifleman squad is beating this grenadier squad Okay, now we'll be moving on to dealing with snipers while we're in a building. So here's a conscript squad, right? And, we're, and there's an enemy sniper here. So what we're going to do here, we know there's a sniper nearby. So we're going to keep jumping in and out of this house. And th this way we can get some shots off with the conscript and deal with the sniper. Because the sniper takes time to go down on the ground and try and aim up a shot. And by the time he's done that, you could jump. You, you'd have been out of the house already. So we'll do this now. But you've got to be fairly quick on your micro. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in the house with this conscript squad. Then press tab. And then we're going to right click to get out again as soon as this as soon as we see the sniper go prone so here we go so we're gonna get in this house try and get a shot off there we go he's not even fired keep firing keep doing this and this way we're, we're dealing damage to this this sniper without letting him fire There you go, and we've killed the sniper before it's even taken a shot. So there you go, that's how you can deal with a sniper. However, this is quite micro-intensive, jumping in and out of a house to be able to deal with the, a, a sniper. But against newer players, they might get frustrated and annoyed, even if they aren't, you know, they might just be like, oh, I give up and I'll pull my sniper back away. But then the sniper's not doing anything, and you're just annoying him, and that might make him, you know, might, might um, distract him from something. So if you could try and do this, if you're not busy anywhere else, it is worthwhile. Okay, so if you want to get rid of somebody who's in a building or who's in heavy cover the best unit to use is a flamethrower unit so here we have a flamethrower pioneer squad and we're going to try and use it against this grenadier and you'll see how effective it is it should be less than three bursts or maybe a little bit more that should wipe this entire squad let's just see if this will work now please work for me <laughs> So here we'll move this squad up a little bit closer so it's definitely in range. We'll now make it to an enemy squad and now it'll engage this rifleman squad. And as you can see, every burst of this flamethrower is taking it down by about a fifth of its health. There you go, a huge chunk of it of that rifleman's health has just gone. And there you go, and here comes the fourth burst. Boom. The entire squad has been wiped. So four bursts of a flamethrower can easily take out any squad that is inside a house. Be that an MG, you know, a rifle... Uh, an opus or and squad, whatever it is, it will die very quickly. Now, how would you deal with a, with a flamethrower when you uh, when you want to try and hold your lines against it? So, what you need to do is you need to kite it. So, instead of just staying in the building as as um as you did then, you take the rifleman out of the squad and you would backpedal and you would get out of cover. Now, this is the only time you would get out of cover against a, a flame, you know, against uh, an opponent um, when you're dealing with flames, right? Don't stay in green cover or light cover when you're out against the flamethrower squad, um, as you will do worse. Now, I'll quickly um, give you a demonstration of this in a second. So here we have a flamethrower versus a rifleman in cover. So you don't want to stay in cover. So what we'll do is we'll move this guy on attack move to, I don't know, here. And we will, wait, let's just do this again quickly. So you go attack move, swap the guy over. So this here comes the flamethrower in. So we don't want to stay in this cover. So we want to back away out of cover and engage him from the, from the back here. So now we're out of cover, and we've, we've tried to split up our models. You want to try and split up your models as much as you can, so the flame damage is only focused on one model, right? So here we go. They're out of cover, and only one guy got killed here, and the other one getting focused. If they're all bunched up together like this, they're all going to be together, and they're all going to take that shared amount of flamethrower damage, which is not what you want. See, they took a big chunk of damage there. So what you want to do is you want to get out there, you want to spread your forces wide, and then you want to take the engagement. Because the flamethrower can only then focus one guy at a time. Probably lose this now because I put him back in cover. But there you go. So just quickly as well. Um, to how to deny cover. We've talked about wiring off. You can wire off the enemy cover points. So if you're not, if you're never doing anything with your units. You've got map control. You might have to cut off. So let's say you're this uh, the left hand side player. You have this opponent's cut off. Um, and there's nothing else you could do. You could possibly be wiring off the, you know, any cover that might benefit your opponent. Um, or, but you could also um, booby trap uh, cover points and possible choke points. So any cover that your opponent might use. 
So, for instance, this house is a very important point that everybody likes to use. So you might want to get a cheeky demo on the side here, and that will one-shot the house and kill anything that comes in it, right? Or you could possibly try and demo any any bit of cover that you think you might get away with. You could just so you could do the same thing here with Goliaths, uh, demo charges, or maybe you want to get a commando nearby, a commando squad that's on hold fire, and uh, you know you might want to put him close here and get ready to lob a gammon bomb as he tries to come to come come over uh, to, to benefit to take benefit from the cover. So. Uh, as you can see, the demo, also demos and, and units like this, explosions, are also good for taking out cover. But they also create cover as well, actually. So you can see here, demolition uh, charge has blown a huge crater in the ground here, which does give green cover. And it's, um, it gives 360 cover because it is a crater. So that is, to be, you've got to bear that in mind. Though it's probably not the best use of munitions to, uh, to, to make cover for yourself um, if you were thinking of doing it for that reason. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is elevation. So, this is a point that not many people might think about, um, but it does occur on certain maps. So, for instance, Angerville has quite significant elevation when it comes to the terrain. If we could, if we do it, if we turn the map like this, you can see there is a significant uh, incline as we go over here. This would mean that units like like a tanks and packs and anti-tank guns are more likely to miss their shots when they're firing a certain unit. So what we'll do is we'll turn these stugs into enemy stugs right now. If you give me one second. There we go. Right. And now they'll try and start shooting at these squads over here. But as you can see, they are going to be hitting the terrain more than anything else. As they are on an incline. They're constantly missing, even though they are within range. Now, one of the one or two of the shots may eventually get through, but it is very worthwhile to mention this uh, point. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll repeat this engagement again just to prove it's not the stugs, just they're really terrible at aiming, because they are not. But as you can see, the majority of those shots are hitting this hill. Okay, basically, now we're on an in a, 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 um, a decline. I hope that's the right word, correct? And as you can see, look, the Stugs now are shooting down a hill, so they're going to be more accurate now. So we're going to turn, turn the Stugs over to, to, to be enemy Stugs. And now they should absolutely start wrecking these conscripts. So we'll just move them around here. Wait for it. So as you can see, a lot more of those shots are connecting to these uh, against these these infantry sections these are uh, conscripts because they are shoot firing downhill compared to up there where the majority of the shots are hitting here and the and here the shots are hit, are mostly hitting the the uh, the conscripts so there you go i think that's everything if you've got any other points that you think i may have missed about cover and range uh please put them in the description below i hope i've um I've, uh, you've learned something from this video. If not, uh, tell me what what video you'd like me to work on. I think next time I would like to talk about snipers because we haven't done that yet. So um, let me know and uh, we can do that. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time. And uh, don't forget to tune in on my Twitch where I play Company Heroes 2 almost daily. And if you want any advice there, just feel free to ask questions. I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, so yeah, take, take care guys and thank you for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.